that commitment that has led a local Vietnam War veteran from Greeley to bring an old war relic back to life. Denver 7 photojournalist Jad Skinner brings us that story tonight. These are the baby pictures. <laughs> a lot of people didn't even uh, understand what I said when I was going to Vietnam. Well, this is my logbook here. The mission numbers in here would tell exactly what you did on that mission. Well, probably the hardest part of the project is to disassemble it. It's put together with thousands of screws. And then you have to strip the paint off. I had no idea that, uh, that it was missing so many parts. 1004, pretty rotted. That's an H-34 Sikorsky. I thought, I can't wait to get home and look in my logbook to see if I flew this monster. 145810. And I was just excited as could be when I flew it eight times. I look at it, and the more I work on it, the bigger it gets. <laughs> I do realize that I bit off a, a little bit more than I can chew with this helicopter. It has a lot of value to me. There's a bullet hole, bullet hole, bullet hole, bullet hole. I wish this thing could talk because it would tell a hell of a story, I'm sure. That's a square one and this is a round one. Gerald Hale, the guy, the guy that gave the aircraft to us, was murdered in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, there isn't a day that I, I walk past that helicopter that I don't think about my friend that was murdered, you know. That's, that's tough. My hope is one of these days that it'll be in the museum, you know. And it should be because three, four, five, six, seven. I've never seen a helicopter with that many bullet holes in it. Well, have we got enough? <laughs> That's enough history for one day. <laughs> a wonderful story. The Smithsonian says they'll take Fritzler's helicopter regardless of how far he gets on that restoration. Well, thousands of kids will be heading to school in the coming weeks, and many cannot afford new school supplies. To help out, we're collecting school supplies for our Pack a Backpack campaign. Our goal is to fill and hand out 2,000 backpacks this year to families like Jessica Bacas. It's embarrassing sometimes, like, to ask for help, or, but we do what we can to try to provide for them. Yeah, they're walking out with something they know they can use, and they won't have to be the child without. They're excited because they're not embarrassed to go to school with used stuff from other people or hand-me-downs and they like it. If you'd like to help take your donation of school supplies, everything from crayons to notebooks and pencils to any Les Schwab Tire Center to help Denver 7 and the Salvation Army pack a backpack before next Friday, July 28th. You can find a list of needed supplies plus a link to donate online at the denverchannels.com slash pack a backpack. It's a controversial concept, limiting the amount of alcohol parents can have when they go out to eat. We love children, everybody loves children, and children don't have a voice. One restaurant is already trying this out. The response they're getting next. Okay, parents, let's see what you think about this. A restaurant in New York is limiting the number of alcoholic drinks parents can have. The Peddler's Bar and Bistro in Clifton Park says it's doing it to curb drunk driving, especially when kids are involved. So if an adult is driving a car and kids are in it, they can only have one alcoholic drink. And they do get berated at the tables, um, and some come back very, very upset. But the managers go to the table and they explain we're not picking on parents. It's just something that we feel in our hearts is something that we can do in order to help. I could never live with myself knowing that I killed somebody driving. Could never do that. So, and it's a choice that you can avoid. And if customers don't want to follow the policy, they are asked to leave. And so far, so good, managers say. So far, so good with the weather, too. Afternoon highs in the low 90s today. We'll be in the 90s again for the next few afternoons with sunshine and mostly scattered showers up in the mountains. And then we get our chance for some thunderstorm activity starting on Wednesday with highs only in the low 80s. So we do cool down this week by about Wednesday into Thursday. We start that warm up coming by the end of the week, too. So some changes on the way. Well, it's that time coming up. The Broncos rookies reported to training camp today. Who's the one to watch? Troy Rank and Woody Page will tell us. And the stadium with no name, the latest on the Broncos search for a sponsor. 
Plus, the Rockies are back on a roll, but do they still need to make a move at the trade deadline? That's next on Xfinity Sports Extra. Welcome, everybody, to Xfinity Sports Extra. We are painting the town orange and blue this week with a little splash of purple in there. Broncos training camp is just about here, and the Rockies are back on a roll towards the postseason. Lots to uh, talk about tonight, so let's do it, shall we? Broncos and Rockies insider Troy Rink is here, and... Of course, ESPN superstar and Denver sports legend Woody Page here as well. All right, guys, Broncos rookies reported to Dove Valley today. So it is on. So let's start right there. Troy, um, the rookie class coming in, who's the one? That'll make the most noise this season. I think it's going to be Demarcus Walker, and here's why. He's a situational pass rusher that can come from the inside, push up, get a rush. They basically missed most of last year without Antonio Smith, who was very good in that role. Also, this is a guy who has a chip on his shoulder. I have never interviewed a guy after a draft who was so upset about where he was drafted. He thought he was the best pass rusher in the draft. He falls to the Broncos. The other thing is, I believe he's going to be better against the run, Woody, than people think. So my answer is DeMarcus Ware because the role available and we're going to physically see it in the stats that he is the most impactful guy. Well, it's a nice answer, but are you a member of the Lollipop Guild or something? I mean, you're off to see the <laughs> wizard. I'm going to give you somebody that's going to make a difference. Carlos Henderson. Here's oh. a guy that averaged Whoa. almost 20 yards per catch last year. He's got the speed, 4-4. He's got the ability to break away after he catches a ball. The guy was a great kick returner if they need him in that role. And they need, we saw it since Wes Welker and Brandon Stokely have been here, they have not had a slot receiver. They need somebody to take the pressure on those two wide receivers. It's not going to be Walker. He's in the rotation. We're talking about a guy that's going to play every down. My Isaiah goodness. McKenzie. Walker, Isaiah Henderson. McKenzie's going to have Anybody hear impact. about Garrett Bowles? Anybody? Oh, Left Bowles. tackle? Come on. Garrett Bowles, first round pick? Lionel's going to be living That's on pro what, football focus, getting what, his stats what? on balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's exactly. going to be Isaiah McKenzie. Well, I was going to say balls just because uh, Woody said they were going to pick balls weeks before it happened in yeah. round one. I thought that was going to be his guy, but hey, Henderson, Walker, Bowles. I like it. Three different answers. All right, the quarterback competition, of course. Number one topic of conversation, number one priority of this new coaching staff, Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon. What are they thinking right now, guys, four days before camp starts? What is in Trevor's head as he has to go out and win the job for the second year in a row here, Troy? Well, he needs to grab this job by the nape of the neck. He let Paxton Lynch back into this derby. I think in an ideal world, they would have preferred to announce Simeon as the starter when they broke for June. He didn't make that happen. He did not distinguish himself enough. So I believe that Trevor Simeon and Woody is going to take chances. He's going to be much more willing to push the ball downfield because he let Paxton back into this competition. And it's up to Simeon now to do things maybe Paxton does well, which is throw the deep ball. Well, I, I think you're asking me what's in his head. Yes. I don't even know what's in my head. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't think anybody does. Nobody yeah, does. So, but okay. here we go. Oh, <laughs> what is Trevor thinking? I better hold this guy off. That I better take more opportunities. I better take right. more chances down the field because we know that that's what Paxton's Lynch Lynch's uh, strength is going to be throwing the ball down the field, taking more chances. Trevor is a nice, safe choice. That's why I think Paxton could end up with a job, and we know whose authority is going to uh, weigh out more than anybody else is there. So Trevor's thinking, I don't want to be the backup. I've, I've earned this job last year. I think Paxton's thinking, I've got this right in my hands if I don't blow it. I wonder if Trevor's thinking, all right, I bet John Elway and the staff would love to have their number one pick be the starting of quarterback. Course. I'm fighting an uphill battle here, but as you said, chip on my shoulder. He's kind of done that uh, his whole career, so we'll see how it plays out starting on Thursday. And now, the stadium. Woody, I love your latest column. Uh, the rock band America with the hit song in 1971. Went into the desert on a horse with no name. Well, the Broncos are going into the season in a stadium with no name. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's funny in its own way because we know what the name of the stadium should be, but uh, there's yeah. no money in it to call it Mile High Stadium. So what they've had to do is they've had two bad companies. Let's face it. Two bad companies have put their name on the stadium. And Joe Ellis told me, we're going to take our time because we don't make sure that we have somebody that's here at least 10, 15 years. The Oakland Alameda Coliseum changes its name every year to some new dot com. Yeah. But the problem is... And I think Joe was very forthright when he said to me, 
people want to put their name on new stadiums like the one in LA. So they're looking for a deal that maybe can give them 10 to 15 million dollars a right. year for 10 to 15 year period because the upkeep and improvement on that stadium and and I've even given up the battle of it being Mile High Stadium because you've got to have a name on it yeah. these days. But until that happens, I'm not going to call it by that name it's no. had on it the last two years. It's going to be Mile High Stadium as far as I'm concerned. Well, and Woody had a good yeah. point in his column, which is that it costs, what, 400000 yeah, or 400, so to take bucks. down the signage, yeah. which that's what they're saying is they don't want to take down the signage, put up Mile High or call it Pat Bowlen Field, and then take it back down again. So they want a permanent right. sponsor. So, you you know, Coors would make sense or DirecTV. Somebody with real legs, roots here, because it's Woody's mentioned, Invesco and Sports Authority both fizzled out, and it's embarrassing. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, 400 grand to take the signs down. So Sports Authority feels going to stay out there. Is what he said in his column. He thought it would take two guys with a pair of pliers and a ladder, right? And that's what it would be. But 400k. All right, my high my statement Christmas is decorations. I mean, how tough is that? Right. All right, guys. Time for a break right now. But when we come back, this year looks like baseball season isn't going to end when the Broncos start training camp. Rockies have bailed out the boat. The purple train is back on track. Did you see this play by Kyle Freeland today? But do they still need to make a move? We'll discuss. And Denver's NASCAR team, a little bit of crash and a lot of burn at the Brickyard today. That's next on Xfinity Sports Extra.